Brother Brienne. Thank you very much. Uh, Milton's peculiar grace was the fact that he always wrote about himself so much. And, uh, and of course, he was the great inspiration for, for truth. He said, truth on any battlefield against any foe will, will prevail. Now, when Vienna came here a uh, few years ago, he, uh, he inspired me with a, a saying of his. He says, Satan gives color to the world. And what does that mean exactly? It means that all of the strife and everything in the world uh, inspires poets, writers, artists. If you go to a museum, you see a lot of that. If you read a book, books from the 16th century on, it's all about conflict and war, love and hatred and all these things, competition. Well, that's Satan inspired. Can you imagine if this were God's perfect world, where you had everything you wanted, good food, a place to rest, no problems, no pain, live forever. You could live as vegetables. Imagine that. So Satan's peculiar grace is that he has given you something to aspire to, to compete with. He's the adrenaline rush in your life. And he also gives you great literature talking about the struggles you have. And so that is Satan's peculiar grace. It's a grace given to you by Satan. Also, something else in the history of religious philosophy, uh, there is something called uh, uh, the, uh, the fortunate fall. Does anybody know what the fortunate fall is? Uh, here's one scholar. The fortunate fall is that uh, because uh, man has fallen, we have been given the grace of Christ being born into the world. And he, he, Christ, of course, is, is sacrificing himself for your good, supposedly. He's taking all your sins upon him so that you might be redeemed. That's the fortunate fall of man, the fortunate fall of Adam and Eve from the garden. They had to be, uh, they had to be redeemed, and Christ did that. That's the fortunate fall. So, just recently, I came up with a hair-raising idea. Well, you know, every... Every year at Christmas, I know some of you aren't, aren't Christians, but every year at Christmas, we should thank Satan because Satan has caused Christ to be born into the world. So let's thank Satan as well as God for giving us Christ. Of course, I got a letter from a professor in South Korea who said, boy, that's hair raising. It's nearly heretical. And of course it's not. And I'll tell you why. Uh, everybody should be thinking about ideas and things. If, if you're, you know, Jewish or Catholic or Muslim or whatever, you should actually be thinking about your religion, not just following it. Because I do believe, I do believe that knowledge, supposedly given to man when Adam and Eve fit into the apple, is a good thing. And I also believe. I also believe that ultimately knowledge is the savior of mankind. Whether you believe uh, in a mythology of religion or you, whether you believe religion is, is exactly the truth of the world, uh, I believe man will be redeemed through knowledge. And it's coming to understand yourself, accommodate yourself to the world, accommodate yourself peaceably to other men. And that's, that's our struggle right now, accommodating ourselves for the different cultures around the world, the different religions, and coming to accommodate ourselves to build a better world. And that's what Hugo's idea is all about. Peace, harmony, and unity. And that's her idea. It comes from a Japanese concept. A wa, that's what wa means, wa sent. And we created recently the Williamsburg Circle of International Arts and Letters, which is a very intellectual uh, organization. We have people on it like Arthur Danto, the famous art critic, probably the most outstanding art critic or, or commentator of the 20th century. He's now 90 years old. We also have the former president of uh, St. Bonaventure University, who's probably the foremost Milton scholar, apart from Steve Ballard. And he formed the largest Milton collection in the world, of which, uh, of course, I'm part. But it's an outstanding scholarly group. Vienna is one of the members 
And uh, so it's not a thing about knowledge, or pursuing knowledge, or finding out how, how literature intersects with the arts. And you can look that up on the internet. Meanwhile, do you have any questions? You want a question? Yeah. Well, I just want to make a comment. That nature gave us sex in, com in compensation for death. You know, he's absolutely right. You know, he's absolutely right. And also, by the way, he's now a, 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 a what a rudist? What do you call him? Sky Flat. Naturist. Sky Flat. He's a naturist. Great. He, he just discovered himself recently in that day. That's true. He does a lot of photography and news guests. Anyway, what a pleasure. Somebody hit him on the head here, let's see. Okay, anyway. Are there any questions about uh, Satan's peculiar grace? Why he has graces? Does anybody believe Satan does not have any graces at all, but he's a dark thing? And, uh, it went on for quite a while, and it was almost equal in terms of God's angels against what were Satan's angels. And, and God had finally decided, well, I'm going to give my son my chariot. And, and the Son of God got into the chariot, the wheels were flaming, and he drove the impious foes off from the verge of heaven down to hell. There they live in adamantine chains and penal fire who justify the omnipotent arms. And down there, Satan, on the lake of fire, he looks around, around he rolls his baleful eyes with witness to huge affliction and dismay. And yet, Satan had another grace. He had will. His strong will. Unconquerable will. And he rose up off the lake of fire, and he said, Hail horrors, hail infernal world, meet thy new possessor. A mind not to be changed. A mind is its own place, and in itself can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven. And he, he rallied his troops off the lake of fire. And uh, he built the city of Pandemonium out of the, out of the uh, earth or the fires of hell. And after he built that, 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 that Pandemonium, he called a solemn council where they had to decide what to do. And some said, well, we can't, you know, raise war against God again. He's too powerful. And Beelzebub, only second, second only to Satan himself, said, what if we find some easier enterprise? There is a happy place 